Okay. Welcome to Click Clack, episode six. I'm Haley. I'm Joshua Grove, filling in for Molly Harney. Yeah, Molly was not able to make it today because she's at manager training for her job. So Josh is filling in. So thanks for coming down. Absolutely. Stoked and, uh, to be here. Yeah. We got Dave Mateo and we have Turner Thorne. What's up, guys? Howdy. Up? Thanks for having me. Of course. Thanks for coming. Um, so today we're just going to talk a little bit about um, the origins of where Dave got into Kendama and same with Turner. And then we're also going to talk about Dave's event weekend in the woods coming up in June. So get stoked. Yeah, absolutely. We're stoked to delve into the, the underbelly of, of the Mateo <laughs> and see where the flow goes. So it'll be a fun little, little click clack episode and I'm yeah. stoked to be here. And Turner came out of the woodworks to, to join us as How well. How exciting so is yeah. this right here? <laughs> what? Yeah. Turner Thorn in the flesh. <laughs> when I saw you when I when I got here from uh, from Vegas, dude, I was so happy to see you. You have no idea. Dude, I'm happy. I'm happy to be here. I'm Such happy a, the timing worked out. Um, yeah, it worked out great. Yeah. yeah thanks for coming, you guys. Crazy. Stoked to have you on the show. Um, all right, so let's just dive right in. Where sure. and when did you get into Kendama, Dave? I got into Kendama back in 2010. October 2010, I believe, or 2011. I worked in a guitar shop called Carvin in Natomas, Sacramento. Sacramento, it was like a small city called Natomas. And um, my boss was very lenient with what we had to do. During the day, we would just have to like wipe guitars down whenever a customer would walk in. We'd have to help them with selling PA systems or um, guitars or uh, I forgot what they're called. What are Amplifiers? They? Amplifiers, yeah. you know. And uh, he let me be on my computer. I was scrolling through Facebook one day and I saw this video. And it was a collaboration video between the Ken Garden and Jake Weens and then Ube's Ice Cream Shop. And the f U U uh, Ube Urban from Ube's, from Ube Ice Cream Shop. And Ube is this at the time was like this super, super sick, like messenger bike painter. Like he had, mm. his thing was like ice cream paint, ice cream paint job, you know, like, yeah. and it was the most phenomenal paint. Like it had like these f flakes on these bikes and it, you, you see it and it feels like you're looking into like a Milky Way galaxy. Like it was phenomenal. It was a shop in San Francisco. It was a, it was a shop that was made inside of a house in a garage. It was awesome. Oh, yeah, and there were, yeah. like he had different roommates in there and stuff, but it was his shop. Wow. It was awesome. But anyway, this video that I saw was the first Tama that was painted by Ube. And then shortly after that, I watched the video and I was like, what is this thing? Like, I want to know what this is. I think I can do it. It looks like I can get into it. And all I did was go on, to, go on the internet and look up three cups, a ball, string, and a spike, and then Kendama USA came up. And that's where I purchased my first Kendama from, which was a Kiaki. And I didn't know what I was getting into. I didn't know whether or not to get an Ozora or to get the, the Kiaki, like Ozora Kiaki. Like, I just went with the one that was most expensive because I assumed that it was the best one that was out there. Yeah. And also at that time, too, like, there wasn't many options. Like, today, mm -hmm. if someone's getting into Kendama and they Google Kendama, it's like pages on yeah. pages come up. And like, There's and that so day, many. Like, Ozoras, like, TK16s, like... I mean, like, that's cool, though. I feel like everyone here, at least my first Kendama was an Azora. Mm -hmm. Yours was a Kiaki. What was yours? TK. TK? Mine was a TK as well. TK, yeah. Yeah, it's cool to see how many like, yeah, Kendamas right? are on the market now. It's crazy. It's unreal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's dope. Um, so, how did you get into Kendama Turner? Um, I was living in Bend, Oregon in 2009. Um, blew my knee skiing, and uh, a good friend of mine, um, Tim Durchie, had one in his truck and um, gave it to me, said, while I'm on the couch, jam with this. And uh, I'd always watched ski movies, and there was some bonus footage of J.P. Eclair mm -hmm. in, like, UP 1.2 is what I think it was. And he played Dama in Japan, and so I had kind of been exposed. And so while injured, I played with it, and sure enough, I looked up some YouTube videos, and obviously Colin was, like, one of the first ones to yeah. come up. I think it was up to, like, edit three or something he had put out, and so I watched all those and told myself, all right, I'm learning, like, all the tricks that he does and like yeah. yeah at the time those were pretty much the only videos i had like that was the only way you could really learn from people too right unless you knew somebody and you could like jam together but there right. wasn't many people at that time and so the only way to really like 
learn tricks, I feel like, was to watch edits. Because mm-hmm. Colin's Edit 7 was my first edit that I watched. Yep. And then I watched your pro announcement a whole bunch. Or mm-hmm. your, not your pro announcement, your pro entry, I guess, right. to Konami USA. And this that is... has a lot to do with kids now. Yeah. It's like, that's the yeah. that's one of the reasons yeah. why the progression is where it's at. Mm-hmm. Because they see what can be done. And they're yeah. like, dude, I can do that. And yeah. then they just flip it and they make it even more crazy. So it's just like, one after the other, after the mm-hmm. other, leveling each other up. Mm-hmm. And that's why Kendama is like where it's at now. It's so crazy. Yeah. It's growing exponentially. Yeah. Like, like you just mentioned too, like your first exposure to Kendama was through a video. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like was a through, video. Through a video. Mm-hmm. A video. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it's so common to like hear that like other than maybe seeing it for the first time, you like see a video of a professional. And for me, it was like, I didn't even know there was professionals, like let alone I just discovered this game. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's amazing, yeah. especially when you're mentioning the, the progression. Like yeah. you, you put something else out there, someone's like, that's possible. Mm-hmm. You know, I can do that. Someone's done it. So now yeah. what else can I do? Mm-hmm. Actually, I haven't thought of this before, but I feel like back when we all started, we were all watching edits. Like there wasn't a thing as like Instagram. You can scroll through and watch one clip and like one single clip and tricks. one clip. Yeah. And so I feel like that could also like be one of the contributors to the progression because people aren't spending a bunch of time making an edit they're spending time making one trick mm-hmm. so it's like more content is being pushed out more regularly mm-hmm. and so that's especially with like the instagram it. stories yeah. and like the one minute on instagram now like yeah, yeah you're able to changer. put out like every single day one the, there's really no need for edits unless you want to dive deep and like yeah. have a theme and yeah. like really yeah. portray something you know and i think that's kind of cool because you can still do what you want yeah. within an edit yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So back in the day, you worked at the Kendama USA warehouse. Uh-huh. Um, tell us about that experience. Uh, the the Kendama USA warehouse was really dope. I got to see both, like, there. I think they're now in like a third warehouse, but I was there from the very very first warehouse, and I remember it being extremely small. Uh, it was probably like uh, I don't know, like maybe like a quarter of a Walgreens or something like that. Like, it it was pretty small. And I remember just seeing a couple boxes to, like, a lot more boxes to then moving it from one warehouse to an even bigger warehouse. And then now it's, like, a giant warehouse. It's crazy how much it's grown, and it's phenomenal. But working there was really... It was really awesome because I was able to see what was coming in. And I felt really really good because I was able to see what was going out and like I cared about this so much and I was like I'm sending this out to this person like I get to send this and pack it and send it to the next person and sometimes I would even like have to restring it and then some kids would be stoked because I'd be like dude keep you know like doing like little notes like Charles does it now you know Mm -hmm. like I used to do that too Mm -hmm. and it's just a great feel yeah you can you can you feel your energy like going into that Mm -hmm. And then knowing that somebody else goes and grabs or gets that and then it stokes them out because they receive their kendama like you are putting out and charles right now like people at the warehouse now are putting out their love into every single box because they care about it you know yeah that's also cool because like kendama you say like it is a corporation Mm -hmm. you know and and all the stuff or some of the stuff at least is shipped over from china so when you think about it a lot of companies that do that like they don't care about what they're actually sending out it's just like let's get this in, let's get this out, let's, like, make money, but Kendama is not that. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, there's obviously a business side to it, but, like, every single Kendama, you have to realize, like, a bead has been tied on by a person, or, mm-hmm. like, it was actually, like, put in a box, or, like, even, you know, signed by somebody, or there is just way more personal, like, way more, There's sentimental like, value. Yeah, there's way more, everything. like, sentimental value that goes yeah. into, like, these products, even though they're coming from China. You mm-hmm. know, like, it doesn't even matter at that point. So... Yeah, absolutely. Down yeah. to the shape of every company. Exactly, yeah. 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 Beyond that, I mean, I'm really connected to, like, earth and whatnot. And, I mean, you're you're playing with wood. You're playing with mm-hmm. the earth. So, I mean, the earth is, like, giving you energy. And then it's, like, being offered to be shaped by, like, a craftsman. And then, like, from mm-hmm. China all the way mm-hmm. over to the U.S. Mm-hmm. And then from those hands to the next hands. And then maybe that dama's give, given away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, like, how many... And we talked about this in, in the podcast that you did in episode two, and, like, you can look at a kendama, and you can see, like, how long it's been alive. How old, like, this or that's even, like, can. a fraction of it. Yeah, that's, like, about just it, part like, of just that. Just have an idea yeah. of, like, this thing's, like, this old, you know? You've got, you know, 12 years of wood just in this yeah. can. Yeah. You know? It could be more, you know? It could be, could be even more. Yeah. So, um, both of you guys have pro models for Kendama USA, and I kind of just wanted to talk about, like, because you had one of the first pro models... Yeah. ever made like in kendama in history mm-hmm. um and 
just like what how does it feel to have a pro model and like what does it mean to you and how do, how does it help you like spread kendama i mean it, it was an yeah. honor like it was yeah. i remember when jero first sent out that email that was 2010 i want to say and yeah it was an honor like it's to be one of the first i think the first company to do a pro model mm -hmm. in, in kendama and yeah it was uh it was pretty special and i feel like we had an opportunity to kind of start something and we took advantage of it and yeah. we really related it to like ski culture and skate culture and um at least that's what we tried to do and yeah i feel like it and it worked it really worked like yeah the idea of a pro model it respects the player it helps the players it's i don't know it's mm -hmm. i think it's pretty cool yeah and you were actually the first person i saw like in a pro video like yeah. my first yeah, video you were in my first yep. video yeah. so right on the seeds being planted and those exactly. seeds blossom into a you know your first pro mod you were the videos that i was watching when i was getting into it like <laughs> yep. you colin zach mm -hmm. <laughs> alex yep. roush there wasn't yeah. many people to Nicholas watch and look Schofer, up to, so. yeah. yeah yeah and dude i had a blast doing all that that was some of the golden years like filming those edits was so fun watching your edit and like seeing the things that you were doing was like how is that <laughs> possible? And now it's like second nature to most kids. Oh yeah, yeah it's, it's crazy. crazy. It's yeah. amazing to see yeah. the progression, honestly. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Dave? How did it feel when you got your first pro model? It was very, it was definitely like super, super emotional for me. Mm -hmm. um, from when we, when we released it, I was we were in New York during Toy Fair, and uh, we just finished the packaging. It was all you know perfect and displayed at at the fair and stuff and. We had just released the video online, like February 12th or something like that. It's, yeah. I, I don't really remember the date, but I just remember like it finally being released and like it, it went public and like we made the announcement and I just remember like kind of like putting my head down and like having to leave the booth with everyone in it. Like everyone was like congratulating me, this and that, you know, and I sat. I remember sitting there, and just le ending ending up leaving and going outside and like having to take a deep breath and sitting down and just like bawling my eyes out. I was literally mm. just crying of joy, really. Yeah, of course. But at the same time, I was asking myself like, Do I deserve this? Do I truly deserve this? You know, like, did I earn this? Did I yeah. really truly earn it? Like, be honest with yourself, and. I just remember just being, I was like, dude, you should be happy for yourself. You did it. And I remember calling my mom and like, it's finally done. I did it. Like, mom, like, look, I have something like, this is something that we can show people. Like we are making a mark, you know, yeah. like we're leaving, like we're inspiring. We're doing, you know, we're doing it. We're inspiring people. Like, yeah. and like what it, what the Kendama means, like every single thing on here, it meant something, it means something, you know? to get the impossible, to attain something, to focus on something, to have intention towards something. Anything that you put your mind to, you can absolutely have if you truly want it. Yeah. But you have to go and get it. Like, yeah. you can't just sit there and think about it. Every breath and every step has to have intention. Yeah. And that goes for anybody that lives here on this planet. Like, you yeah. can have whatever it is you want. You just gotta go and get it. Every breath and every step like intention. moving moving forward intention. yeah positively yeah i would hope you yeah know? that makes me i want to hear what um just expanding more like i like what you're going with this but the dream catcher on there mm -hmm. you know, catching your dreams like what does that mean when the the dream falls through or when you actually catch the dream you know is it all part of the positive growth like kaizen um you know is a failure um i guess i'm asking a lot of like a, a lot of questions but you know how does the dream catcher really sit with you on that kendama and then expanding on that maybe? I mean, everybody has dreams, right? Everyone has dreams, everyone has aspirations. Uh, while you're going for that, while you're trying to attain that, there's gonna be failures, there's gonna be mistakes, there's gonna be something that's gonna try and block you. And from one of my mentors today, uh, he said something to me like, stop understanding things, meaning like, don't understand and like look up at it and try to understand it instead overcome it step over it what is the next op obstacle your dreams are always going to be there but what are you doing to get there right you know are you going to let something stop you are you going to let one mistake stop you are you going to let the next obstacle stop you or are you going to continue because whether or not you get to that dream 
and you die before you get there, the world's still going to keep on spinning. Yeah. But how are you portraying that to others to help them go for theirs? Yeah. That's the message. Yeah. Like, yeah. what are we doing to tell others to be creative, to get what they want, yeah. instead of falling into our so-called system? Mm. Yeah. Because we always hear, like, it's designed, like, the chair, like, this chair is designed to make us, like, not do the things that we're meant to do mm-hmm. we are re- we are we are a resilient species mm-hmm. we're meant to create we're meant to do things yeah. we're not meant to sit in front of a screen for eight hours a day we're not supposed to be sleeping eight hours a night yeah. you rest when you want you get up and you do what you want yeah. do you think kendama in that way is going to be like a huge a huge thing for the younger generation Cause, absolutely because like, i mean there's because like, every so single absorbed, kid that we yeah. give this to once they pick this up and they give it a try, they are continuously creating and they don't even realize it yet. Yeah. Wait until they find something that they're passionate about and then they apply the same energy that they put into Kendama into their hardest trick into what they absolutely love yeah. with passion. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's the thing about Kendama is like it's not it's not just one skill because it transfers over to everything. Mm-hmm. You know, like like climbing for me, like the same thing, just yeah. like being mindful and like what you're doing and like actually focus on like the movements and like you know, we were talking about this with you with skiing. Yep. Like I don't know, can you tell us about how like, yeah, like, Kendama's translated to skiing for you? Just the idea of being able to get away from everything and skiing and like it's like a complete, I don't know, separation from reality. It's it's nice. Yeah. It's a good way to get away and the more I ski, the more I'm inspired to play Kendama, I guess. And yeah, I don't know. It's just it's, it's my yeah, it's my way of getting away. Can I ask you a question? Absolutely. Would you consider instead of getting away that you're actually plugging in to like the yeah, present? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, I would see that. Like, I'm I'm tuning into what, what I'm passionate about. It's something that I want to do until the day I die. And yeah, and yeah. that's what yeah. And that, yeah, and that's that's my passion. That's what yeah. I love. And the fact that that inspires my kendama play is is something that I like almost lost. Like, I almost mm-hmm. lost that connection. Yeah. And because I you know when I was doing kendama full time, I wasn't skiing as much. And I think I've found like a really good balance. Like since I've taken a break, like I've got to I've got to ski and that actually makes me want to play Kendama. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you should never feel forced. Like, you're not going to be inspired if you feel forced yeah, or, like, obligated course. to do mm-hmm. something. But. So whatever that is that inspires you, absolutely send it. <laughs> yeah. So I also want to talk about, um, like, Spike Hard Catch Low and that, like, the brand of yours and like, mm-hmm. how you came up with that and what inspired that and what do you plan to do with it. And you also put it on the, was it the, the bird? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The perch. On the bird. Yeah. Spike Hard Catch Low, how do you carry Kendama style? Like, mainly it's like we watch people play we watch a lot of people play i mean a lot of people are actually playing now like like super high and super low you know but before when i was playing i mean i remember watching and it was only in one area you know and i have a dance background i like when you hear about someone that break dances you're like oh get down get down you know like get down like go up go to the floors show some style do your thing you know flow with it show some flavor and like having a dance background and applying that to kendama that was like part of what spy card catch low became and actually the when when spy card catch low came up it was i remember playing the way that i played and then jake was like dude like that's so crazy i like how you like spike hard and i like how you like you then you catch low like you catch as low as possible and it makes complete sense and really like the reason why i wanted to play that way was i didn't want to be like everybody else. I want to play differently. And that's what caused me to move the way that I moved. But having a dance background helped with that. Of course. Having like a musical background helped with that. And it just, I did what felt good. I was genuinely doing what felt good for me and what I enjoyed doing. And Mm. that's what ended up coming out. Yeah. I feel like it was so influential too, because since you were one of the first players in the U.S., um, you were the first person to like branch out into a style that wasn't just like regular Kendama play And so I think that's why you, you caught the eyes of so many people and so many people were inspired by you It's, it's like oh, it doesn't have to be this like rigid like, mm-hmm. you know Fast like precise thing like and, and same with you, you know Well like, you and I mean Dave you inspired my like flow Like I feel like you were one of the first people that tapped into like the flow like the dance, you know EG's like Got like a oh, dude, and, like, been... is unreal, man. And you know there'll be Phenomenal. a day, there'll be a day when we'll have choreographed kendama competitions. I know, maybe it's twenty five sure. years, twenty to ten years, but why not? I foresee it. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, you, the influence of the flow that, you know, listening to yourself, and 
seeing this box and like maybe feeling contained by that box, but not feeling contained and knowing that you can expand infinitely beyond that and do things that, you know, haven't been done yet. You just have to try and explore mm -hmm. and fail and learn that each attempt is an opportunity to grow and to, you know, continue to inspire yourself. Um, so going back, you said that um, referencing music and dance, like, which did you find first? Did you find music? Did you find dance? Did you find kendama first? <laughs> Give us a timeline. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. I didn't start... I mean, getting into music was, like... My first instrument ever was, like, the piano. Like, being in a Filipino household, like, my parents had a piano, and they were, like, in hopes, like, oh, dude, play. Like, <laughs> go play. Like, we had, like, a, 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 a tutor that came in to teach us how to play. And I would just, like, kind of dabble, but I never paid attention to, like, reading or, like, learning notes. I would, like, play what I heard and that was my way of learning and it's the same with like visual like I learn visually and I learn how to play music by hearing mm. I can't I don't know how to read music at all so if you give me a guitar and like play a song I can like dabble around a little bit and figure it out and kind of like get the gist of where to play but my I got into music like my first true instrument was like a, it was a saxophone and I was like in fifth, fourth grade or something like that. And then like I stopped playing the saxophone and I kept on going and I got into like playing the drums. And then in high school is when I picked up the guitar. The guitar I excelled a lot in because uh, it was very convenient. I was able to take it with me everywhere. And I would do the same thing, listen to music that I really enjoyed and I'd try to play it. And then there would be other people at school that played and I would jam. Like when, when I went to college, I did not go to class. I, I mean, the only class I went to was my music jam class is because that's what I enjoyed. And that was the yeah. only class that I got an A in. And when I, it was time for me to go to my other classes, I would just go to the library in the lobby and I would sit down and I would play my guitar. Mm. And I would play guitar for like, like, I didn't even know it, but like people were walking by and like I was playing for the people walking to their next class and giving them like an enjoyable experience. But in reality, I was just sitting there like, I was in my own zone, like, just doing what I want. And then eventually there was another guy that ended up playing with me. <laughs> and we became really good friends. And then, like, it was so crazy because, this, like, the college I was going to, the community college, ended up hiring us for, like, one of their events at the, like, at the school, which was really cool. Um, so I'm already seeing a pattern. Finding what you love to do, what's yeah, like, intrinsically no, motivating. Absolutely. Doing that beyond all, like, limits of what people tell you to do. Mm -hmm. And then you find community there that someone else loves that same thing. And you get creative with that. And then you get... And then it just gives it you... It keeps blossoming. Yeah. You find yeah. what you love and you keep watering that seed and it grows exactly. like a beautiful plant. Yeah. And then you start eating that and you're nourished by it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, no, I'm serious. Yeah, you're absolutely right, man. Like, you find something that you love. You do it for free. And eventually, out of nowhere, it just pays you. Like, if you do what you love, that's what matters. Because people are seeing that you're doing what you love. What does that do? It tells the it next person to do the same, what yeah. they love, too. Yeah. And then you will ultimately get to where you need to be. Not where you want to be. Where you need to be. There's a, a question that changed my life that I want to offer. And uh, it's what would have to happen one year from today in order for you to have the most successful and fulfilling year yet? And what if you asked yourself that question every single year when you got back to that point? Yeah. And um, it really comes down to just doing what I love as much as possible. And like we were just expressing, like it's going to continue to expand and blossom and different branches are going to go in different directions that you maybe even never knew about that's going to offer a new outlet. Um, so... What would make this next year the best and most successful, fulfilling year yet for you? Honestly, like, there's nothing that I can label that I, I would want. Really is like, if I wake up tomorrow and I'm happy, just like what you said, if I'm happy, if I wake up tomorrow and I'm doing what I love, that's what matters. Mm. Like, I just feel like I'm repeating your question, but... It really is just like if you do what you love, that is the pinpoint, the passion. It's what I mean, tomorrow I could change. Like I can be like, I don't want to play Kendama and then I want to continue with music out of nowhere, you know, but I'll always love Kendama. Like I know that this is already part of my life because it's changed it. Mm -hmm. I would not be where I am. I am right in this now 
if it weren't for Kendama. If it weren't for Kendama Yusei, if it weren't for Turner playing Kendama. Yeah. If it weren't for getting on the phone with you. Yeah. You know, like, I am here for a reason. Yeah. I think you're here for a reason. I believe that there's a reason why Molly ended up getting a management, like, training today and, like, you're here. There's some weird, odd, like... Cookie crumbs of the universe, man. Yeah. Yes, yes. Like this, ed- like, this wave of energy is bringing certain people <laughs> together. Turner. Turner. <laughs> what surprise is this? Like, there's a whole entire reason for this, you yeah. know? Like, yeah. we don't know what it is yet, but how do you feel being here? I mean, it's crazy. I'm... I was, I mean, to give a little context to the listeners, I'm pretty much on a road trip for the next month or so. Um, and yeah, I was driving up the California coast and I hit up Haley. I said, Hey, I'm going to be in Oregon. Can I sleep on your couch? And, uh, I show up and she's like, yeah, Dave's going to be here in a day. <laughs> I was like, stay for <laughs> so two days. Stay? Just so, stay to hang out. <laughs> yeah. The timing just, it couldn't We're have been definitely. better. Yeah. Impeccable. Pretty rad. Yeah. Out of nowhere. Yeah. Synchronistic. Yeah. And then. Yeah. But I'm would you how how would you say like your well being feels like do you feel happy feel in the moment yeah and that's it's like exactly all like that matters what um, Josh was diving into is just do it what makes you happy every day and um, yeah I don't have like and sometimes like in your case like doing nothing is like doing something oh, like more perfect. than you even realize yeah. you like know all, yeah like it's okay to like not have like a set mm-hmm. home at the time or not have exactly. a job at the time like it's okay to just like yeah, you know. get in your car and drive up the coast like and enjoy what's exactly right that. in front of you yeah and yeah. I, you know i worked really hard all winter and skied really hard to like save up money and make this yeah. happen and so yeah you made it happen yeah and i don't know you think about something long enough it'll eventually it'll eventually happen so yeah it's one of my favorite quotes is from um napoleon hills if the mind can conceive it and believe it it can achieve it and the way I like to consider is if you can perceive it you know imagine the dream and believe it enough to try again and again and again in the face of failure and learning from that belief and continuing to believe you know you'll eventually achieve that and if you don't it's an opportunity to to transcend your original vision maybe there's something even better like waiting for you yeah so yeah is it really failure though you know, is it really failure like, is a great question because yeah. just, I think because it's, it's, a le- it's the way you look at it. Yeah. We've just been conditioned in the way that uh, I've been um, taught through mindfulness practices. It's, you know, we're working with neuroplasticity. We're working with redesigning our conditioned mind, our conditioned mm-hmm. perceptions that we've been raised with. So, you know, it gives you the opportunity to practice open-mindedness. Like, you know, you've maybe have heard that term. That's yeah. the idea of just not being totally set on one idea and not being totally biased on one idea and literally just being able to be open to the mm-hmm. experience, open to the thoughts that are going through your mind and being able to to filter through it all to, to really create what is true to you and and bring that to life. Yeah. Do you Hashtag. think Kendama, like, I mean, I guess this is a question for you, but do you think Kendama, like, helps you channel that? Because it is, like... Absolutely. It's like a meditative, like... It's, it can be meditative once you get in, like into the rhythm of playing Kendama. But Absolutely. But do you think it helps, like, like lessen the thoughts that are going through your head or amplifies it? I don't think it lessens it. What, what I notice in my own experience, both in meditation, sitting, walking, gardening, as well as Kendama meditation, of just grinding a trick for an hour or two, is when I'm really deep and I'm trying to focus on going slow, so I'm having quality repetitions each attempt you know you don't necessarily like ben harold just said this in the last episode too it's like you don't want you know a like overwhelming quantity of attempts you want quality attempts right. and I, I live by that because you know it's giving you the best opportunity for the trick but talking about the meditation and the thoughts going through the mind you're going to have thoughts that are like maybe what you, you might be having thoughts that are in the future like what is this going to look like when i land on film like i really want to see this on film you could be thinking about like a, an argument that you just had, you know, and when I when that happens in the practice, it's the opportunity to just notice that you're thinking about the future and notice that you're thinking about the past and just hone back in. Yeah, it's OK that that just happened, but you're, you're training and you're directing your awareness that you're you know, you're already in this activity, but your mind is somewhere else. And so you're like, OK, that just happened. No, you know, coming back to the future, coming back to the present. Yeah. Um, which inspires me to ask Dave a question, actually, because when you said that um, your pro release at Toy Fair was really emotional, you're sitting on the curb, you're, you know, you're joyfully crying, but what I heard you mention is, like, you had some self-talk occur, mm-hmm. there was like, you know, do I really deserve this? You're checking yourself, like, did I really do all the work for this? Um, and 
I don't I don't even know the question I want to ask you, but just maybe like tapping back into that experience. Like, how do you work with your self talk when your mind is saying like I don't deserve this, I'm not good enough, I I can't land this trick. Even if those thoughts just occur, how do you how do you shape those? Those are thoughts of self doubt, mm-hmm. and doubt is a made up word. If we can release that from or unlearn that, anything negative like doubt, self hate, whatever, like if we can eliminate the word doubt, period, from yourself, from everybody else, how much more can you get done? Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Like, and that's what I'd have to do. I have to dig back in and realize that it's myself doubting myself. Mm -hmm. And if you don't own up to that either, though, you're only going to tear yourself down. Yeah. Because you have to be proud of what you have accomplished through the passions and the love that you've done with whether it was Kendama, Click Clack Radio, Peace Sticks, Skiing. It doesn't matter what it is. You have to own and love what you have done from your present in order to be happy in your now. And in order to release and give that to others. Hmm unless we are every single one of us do that there's always going to be a little bit of held something holding back for sure mm-hmm. but if you truly understand yourself and really love what you have accomplished you can then truly love and share that with others yeah you, you have, have to, to own who like, you are you have to recognize that's a possibility before you can even like mm-hmm. start doing that mm-hmm. You know, like, I mean, like for me, because I can I can relate with like the like self doubt, like Mm -hmm. negative self when I'm filming, especially because like Mm -hmm. there's something about filming that I'm like, this just like. But what happens in the end? What happens in the end? Well, you usually land. You usually land it. Right. Like, I mean, it's yeah, I don't know. It's inspiring to hear that. Like, oh, it's like an option to like not beat yourself up. There. You just said it. it's the option. Yeah. You have the ability. It's the choice. It's the choice. Yeah. The option or the choice. But it's really up to you to really make that choice to either move. And it's, there's no like, there's no like 70, 30. It's 50, 50. It's truly 50, 50. It's either you decide to make it better or you decide to want to work to make things better for yourself. Or you can just like kind of lukewarm and like, "Eh, I'll just wait till tomorrow. I'll wait till tomorrow. Maybe I can go this way. But the cool thing about it is like, even if you're feeling that way, you can always go this way. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, you have to decide to do that. I'd also say it's, uh, that's where it really becomes a practice. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the most beautiful things I find about Kendama. It's, it's offering thousands upon thousands of people around the world who maybe their practice was playing video games or I'm not bashing video games. I grew up playing video games. Yeah. But it's a, a wooden video game that has an unlimited amount of levels to explore, an infinite amount of potential. You can create your own levels, create games. You have like, so many lives. It's mine. <laughs> yeah. So many lives. You have almost infinite lives. Batteries will know? never die. Until Batteries. it until it breaks. Yeah. Totally. And then you have glue. Yeah. <laughs> There's options, but you know it's like it's a beautiful thing to to have a practice because the practice brings the opportunity to direct awareness and direct how we're internally. Uh, recognizing our experience. In other words, how we're identifying with what we're telling ourselves, how we're listening to the self-doubt, the self-talk. And when that self-doubt comes in with more practice, it literally, that you just, you're not listening. Yeah. You're, you're being. Mm-hmm. And that's like a beautiful Jedi practice. Yeah. You know, just wax on. But also wax it's important on. to not like push those feelings away. Cause like, yeah. that's something that I like, I don't know, I found was so significant about like doing yoga. Cause like I used to do it quite a bit like with my mom and like, you know, and, And they would always say, like, yeah, whatever you're feeling, like, don't push it away. Mm -hmm. If it's bad, it's negative, like, sad, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. like, that's fine. Just, like, don't hold on to it. It's absolutely Mm -hmm. okay to be angry and to be sad and to be frustrated. It's human. It's, like, one of my favorite things. It's natural. It's It's unnatural not to. Yeah. Yeah. I think that might be one of my favorite things about Kendama is the fact that there is so much failure involved. Mm -hmm. And I like, you know, whenever we would do events and stuff, you'd see kids, like, they can't land a trick. They get frustrated, frustrated. And I say, good. Like, you need to learn how to fail like before you succeed. Every champion knows what it feels like to lose. Yeah, and, and I feel like in our generation, everything is just so, it's given, it's so easy. I could turn my phone on, Amazon, buy something, and it's there the next day. It's like everything's immediate. There's immediate gratification. Yep. A lot of, you know, our society now, and I feel like 
Kendama is definitely something that you have to work towards. You're not going to pick it up and be good at so it. You've got to fail a lot before you... There's an expectation that, like, it should happen like that because of, like, the way that our society is a little bit, yeah. so quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just like the fact that... I feel like the fact that you can't do it for so long is kind of the... I don't know. It's the, it the beauty of it, yeah. It's so hard to, you know... No, for sure. That's a really good point. It's a little check on you. Yeah. And that's also why I'm sure you've shared... I've seen both of you share first experience spikes, you know. And I would actually maybe want to dive into a couple stories with you because I know the power and the experience, both like reward chemical wise in your brain, neurologically, what's released when you achieve something and you actually get that gratification. Oh my my package from Amazon just got here. I feel right. great. <laughs> I'm all doped up on dopamine. Like I feel great. <laughs> got my new dress. I'm going out tonight. <laughs> you know? But Kendama gives that similar experience because when you fail over and over and over and over again and you finally get that spike you have a release and your body feels good. That yep. is the moment that we can transform our perceptions about what's possible because you're you're flexible. Your mind is flexible at that moment. You have chemicals that are released. Like that's how neuroplasticity works. So maybe if you can think of one like what has been like the the first experience that comes to your mind of sharing a spike. Like one of the 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 highlight moments of that first spike. What was that story like? Either or, either one of you first. <laughs> there's a lot of those. Yeah, there's a whole lot. <laughs> Thousands I mean, at every at event we go to or every contest, like even just walking down the street, like someone's gonna try it and someone's gonna get pumped. Like is there that's one a guarantee. That so out? yeah, that's a tough question. Is there a good question? Sticks? Oh, okay. All right. All right. You no, want to go first? No. Okay. How about it? Um, I've had a lot of these experiences being in the show or being part of uh, the Jabberwocky show in Prism in Las Vegas uh, when I was still performing with them. And there's one part of the show where I would end up selecting someone random in the crowd, and sometimes it would be someone that has never, ever picked up a kendama. Mind you, I cannot speak when I have this mask on. Yeah. Mm. And I'm <laughs> showing, I'm showing these people, I'm showing, I'm showing this person in front of 850 people or 830 people. There's one person that has never touched a kendama ever in their entire life, and I'm sitting here, I give them three chances. Three chances only. And I explain to them on how to do it without speaking and by gestures, straight miming. Mm. And there will be times when they are completely way off, and there are actually times when they would get it, sometimes the first try. And when that happens, the amount of, like, energy and happiness that everybody else in the crowd has is unexplainable like Mm -hmm. you just feel this surge and you're just like whoa and this person this (laughs) yes like that's the that is the reaction there's like whoa like i did this like what i can't believe it and then me i'm still trying to not talk and i'm like (laughs) (laughs) like what like in my mind that's my reaction you know and then to be able to do that just shows if there is some kind of like dedication or like motivation or determination to do something to get to the happiness that you want. Yeah. It's right in no, front that's of you. No, that's yeah. like the cool thing about it is like you don't have to talk to teach. You Kendama. don't. You guys, I experienced this and I want to hear your spike story too, but this made me think of like, you know, the not talking about it and teaching someone Kendama. Um, Cause I went to Thailand with uh, Kenzaki san from Kit Corporation and mm-hmm. you know, a couple of their company people and TJ. And um, we were just like touring around some, I don't know, random like tourist thing when we were, when we were there. And there was a school, like a, like a school, probably, I don't know, 15, 20 kids that were maybe elementary be get, like getting into middle school so they're super young didn't speak much english but they were learning english so they approached us because you know obviously like stick out like a sore thumb in thailand <laughs> and um they were asking us questions to try to like ask us our name in english because they were trying to learn and we, we had kendamas obviously and um we were trying to teach them how to like spike in big cup but we couldn't like translate that we could say like my name is this my name is that but we couldn't be like do the big cup because it would make no sense mm-hmm. so we weren't even talking But, like, three of the kids got Spike, like, a bunch of them got Big Cup, and they were all just so pumped. Like, I don't know, it's just cool because you don't have to actually talk to somebody to do it. You can just be, like, you know, in, like, motion and, like, give them thumbs up and, like, you don't have to gesture. You don't. You don't. Yeah. It's, like, one of the coolest things about Kendama, I think. Anyone can learn it. Makes it universal. Yeah, it does. Yeah, okay, what's your story? I want to hear it. I mean, I don't know. I (laughs) I feel like there's been, like you were saying, there's so many. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to, like, pinpoint one. Oh, man, that's tough. 
I do remember there was one that kind of sticks out in my mind. It was in Utah. It was a little girl. She couldn't have been. I'm pretty sure her mom said she was five. Mm-hmm. And I remember they kept, like, taking the Dama from her. Like, no, 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 you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to hurt yourself. And she, like, kept grabbing him off the table. And eventually, fine, like, they were like, all right, fine. And she eventually got Big Cup. And that was the youngest person I've ever seen. So it's not a spike story, but everyone was just, like, kind of blown away. Same thing, like, though. Jeez, yeah. like, she barely talk. And she, she, like, she was <laughs> dialed in. Like, she yeah. wanted it. And she got it. It's pretty cool. So yeah, that makes me think. I remember that. I was trying to, like, think of one specifically, too. And it's hard to, like, pinpoint one. There's a couple stories that come to mind. But what really is my favorite experience it's interesting saying this, but it's when people say that I would never be able to do that. I can't do that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like and I'm like, <laughs> what is the best that can happen if you simply just try it for 60 seconds? It's like selling Kendama to someone, I guess, in a way, but it's getting them just, I'm selling them to play. You know, play this, try it for 60 seconds. I bet you, you'll surprise yourself. And the moment that they get it, whether it was the first try or it was on the last try of that 60 seconds, like, that moment just totally changed potentially what they thought to be possible for themselves. Like, right. what else are you telling yourself that you can or cannot do? This little toy just showed you that you're maybe telling yourself like the wrong thing mm-hmm. or the opposite thing. Totally. Maybe not the wrong thing, but it, you're you're telling yourself that you can't. You're listening. You're feeding yourself that you can. Opens up so many possibilities. You can. For people, yeah. You can. <laughs> you can do you it. Can you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Can yeah. damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I do also want to talk about um, you pretty much started the first ever Kendama camp. NKR. Was it the first? NKR, yes, I okay, believe. Okay, National Kendama was Retreat uh, 2015? It was 2015, I think. I think. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I wanted to talk about okay. like like backstory on how you got the idea, what you thought it would do. What, what was your like motive with a Kendama camp? The idea for uh and or not just nkr but like kendama camp in general Mm -hmm. was actually spawned in the first root store people were talking about it you know i remember zach and jake everyone calling like everybody speaking of colin colin is calling us on the telephone we're gonna have to answer this yeah answer it hello colin colin sander we were (laughs) just speaking of you and then you end up calling we are currently in click clack radio interview session You're live oh, right now. We live and direct right now. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you have to say for our viewers, Colin? Uh, I have to say, I just got off a hour and a half phone call with some obscure, progressive, epic, potential Dama world <laughs> <Yeah>. dreams, goals, <laughs> etc. So you never know. Something, something sick might come out down the road but you know I'm grinding man I just had a Kendama dream last night so I don't know if you were Ooh. were dreaming Dama last night too but Jossie had a dream <laughs> good to have you in the studio my friend we were just talking about uh, the the beginnings of NKR and Roots Tour so the... NKR is just like it's just insane NKR was like the exact thing that Kendama needed at that time which was like bringing it more to like the whole community element and just getting a bunch of people together where you don't have to worry about schedules, where people are staying, anything else is just like full immersion. And there really wasn't anything like that at the time when NKR, like the first one happened. And right. yeah, now it's just like, he just that's answered the obvious. question. That's how you got to do it. <laughs> well, it's beautiful that you just <laughs> chimed in. You know, the universe is really working with this. Uh, <laughs> You know, you just answered this question. So, um, do we have any questions for Colin? Ooh, 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 ooh. Colin, <laughs> I have a question for you. I have a question. Do for I you, love Colin. Click Clack Radio? Yeah. No, no. Yes. I don't mean to put you on the spot, man. Mm-hmm. But would you be down June nine to the eleven? Be the unicorn and become one of the <laughs> counselors. Oh my God, Colin, for do it. Yeah. Weekend in the woods. Yo, I want, trust me, I want to pop in, I want to say what up, want to make an appearance, but here's the thing. The weekend before Weekend in the Woods is my brother's bachelor party up in Mammoth, so that's going to be a little rowdy, slash I'm going to be away from But Tory that has for a nothing days. to do with that other weekend. No, it's more of like the Tory, it's more of like the Tory life, but <laughs> before that, 
two, <laughs> I'm going on like a two night adventure deep in the mountains, and like basically, I'm not going to be allowed out of the house on that weekend, probably. <laughs> okay, well, we're gonna kidnap you. We're gonna sand <laughs> map you. I will call Tori. Like, I'll pop in for like an evening. I'll come say hi from like whatever two three p.m. till like ten. But I can't like fully be there for the whole thing. All right, Make that's good enough for me, man. That's yeah, good enough I'm, for me. I will definitely come say hi. Like there you go. Weekend in the woods, like I I will see you. Maybe it'll be the sat. Maybe it'll be the sun. But like I'll come through. There you have it, Colin Sander. Will Colin be Sander, Sander, everybody. At weekend in the woods, come hey, and see the when unicorn. I popped into NKR last time. Yeah, I remember. For like three hours. <laughs> <laughs> so that was awesome. <laughs> What, I have a question. What's your what's your uh, or what's the biggest benefit of having a, a kendama retreat like, uh, you know, weekend in the woods, NKR? I mean, honestly, probably the biggest benefit is it's just like it's the committing nature of being like, all right, we're here to play kendama to get better at kendama. You've got all these people around you who. You know, basically, they keep the hype alive. They give you trick tips. It's kind of like you just get that momentum and that energy of a bunch of different people that are all really like committed for those few days. So it's not like your average like, oh, let's just have a session with some homies that lasts two or three hours. It's like we are gonna get immersive and fully like break through to new levels of dom that we like haven't reached yet. Absolutely. So probably, I would say I would say the immersion element for sure. Because it's like when you're just at home or you're at a friend's, you're not going to be like, we are playing Dama for 12 hours straight. Like, you know. Um, yeah. yeah it's, it's nuts, though. It's fully I immersed. Definitely wanna, I definitely want to get my Slack game on, too, and improve that. And, you know, there's so many other things that people can kind of learn and experience at these, like, retreats that it's more just the whole balance and, like, skill culture and not just Kendama, but, like you know having fun learning other challenges as well yeah absolutely it's continuing to push the mind body spirit and soul of every one of our beings so well thanks for the the surprise call we're gonna yeah i think we might have to give you a call after the interview yeah we'll call you back yeah yeah have fun finish out your show good to hear from you guys just hit me whenever have fun up there beautiful Um, yeah sander out Bye, Colin. Love you, Colin. Peace out, geese. Bye, Bye, Dave. See ya. Oh, Turner's here. Hey, Turner. Yo, <laughs> brother. <laughs> All right, peace out. Guys. All right, All right later. <laughs> but where, where the idea, like, came from was actually Root Store. Turner was there. I remember Turner talking about it. We were at, what was that place called? The skate place? Wind, Windell's? Is it yeah, called Windell's? Windells. We were at Windell's, and we were, like, talking about Kendama Camp. But it just never ended up happening. Yeah. And then and care happened. It did. <laughs> yeah. And then we did. And then I just put the put forth the put forth the intention with uh, at the time it was uh, Keith Cristobal. Uh-huh. And then we did it for two years. And then now he's doing it with Sweets. And then uh, I'm doing camp or uh, weekend in the woods. Like there's a there's more than one camp. There's like 103 Dama camp in Japan. There's Camp Dama happening in Minnesota. There's Weekend in the Woods happening. The fact that there's three different ones is phenomenal. Yep. Yeah, because spreading. it's really spreading yeah. the awareness. So, so June, we can't ask for more. Oh, June 9th yeah, to June the 11th. June 9th through 11th. Where's that? It's going to be in Angeles Oaks, California. Uh, you can get your tickets at weekendinthewoodsretreat.com. Yeah, we'll put a link below. Please do. We will. <laughs> we definitely will. There's yeah. We have Josh, Josh is one of our counselors. I can go through the list, but just visit the site. You'll see yep. every, all the names. Yeah, awesome. Okay, also you have some like really cool stuff to give away to people that get tickets this year. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about it. Uh, we have Weekend in the Woods Canteens, Water is Life. So you can have one of these water bottles only if you attend there. Canteen. 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 Yeah, I like that, Josh. <laughs> Canteen. And an actual camper bag. Uh, it's... It's got a laptop pocket. I mean, it's a it super sick. It comes with a sick... laptop? No. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with a laptop pocket. Uh. <laughs> not that that's supposed to sell you on anything, but it's not about that. It's These are just a few of the things that you're able to receive when you're yeah, there. They are we really also cool. have like a custom um, 
made by Kendama USA, Weekend in the Woods, Tama. Awesome. And we're going to be making some hats, which is going to be super, super mm-hmm. sick. I'm super excited about. Nice. Uh, what else? Yeah, we're, I mean, we still have tickets out. Go and grab them yeah. if you want to be part of it. It's going to be a great time. There's going to be a lot of high energy there. The area that we're going to be playing Kendama is called the Arc Room. It's this huge gymnasium uh, in the middle of the woods, and then we'll be moving that outside. There's uh, over 13 cabins that we can use. Uh, the place is much bigger than the last retreat where we had. Um, everywhere is paved, so you can drive up there much easier than going through dirt. So overall, it's just a better venue, a better place. It's going to be phenomenal. Just yeah. be there. Super yeah. excited yeah. for it. Yeah. you guys. It's going to be really fun. Super excited for it. Um, this kind of expands going away from Weekend in the Woods, but I'm curious where um, you see the Kendama community and Kendama in the world in the next 20 years. Like where, If you could have put an imaginational bubble on where you think Kendama will be in 20 years after seeing its exponential growth <laughs> so far. Over the past, well, you've been playing for seven, seven years? It's going to be... Years? It's, I mean, it's already global, yeah. but I feel like soon, I mean, I, I feel like ha- it's going to happen within the next couple years where everyone is going to know what Kendama is, like yo-yo. Everyone's going to, everyone knows what a yo-yo is now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like almost every single person knows what a yo-yo household is. Household name. It's a household, mm-hmm. yeah, household name. I think Kendama will be within, I don't know, I'll throw a number out there, five years. It's possible for it to become a household name like everyone will know what a kendama is yes like in japan How like do you in think japan you go about doing that awareness Not you specifically <laughs> awareness yeah i mean it's gonna take everyone in the kendama community to actually put forth energy and intention to putting it into other people's hands i mean let people be curious about it that's what jake would always say like people are genuinely curious about what this is if they mm-hmm. see you playing they're like looking like well, what's that you know let them be curious, but don't hold it to yourself. Yeah. Like if you yeah. see that they're curious, if somebody walks by you and you see that they're curious, share. Sharing is caring. We always hear that, right? Just share it. What's the worst that can happen? They can say no. What's the best but that, still, that, that could happen? Yeah. Can what's the yes. best? Yeah, yeah. What's the best that can happen? It's just gonna get into that person's hand. What's the best that can happen? That that person can put into another person's hand. It's wildfire. Yeah. I think you just answered the question that I was gonna ask next. Next, and that's you know, in in what you just said of you know. Kendama spreading globally, like I was gonna ask, what uh, would you invite the Kendama community at large to to focus on in a way of how to do that? And I think you've touched on that of not holding to yourself, being open, being vulnerable to share, to, mm-hmm. to push yourself beyond your comfort zone. When you are out of your own comfort zone, that's when you're really growing. If you're comfortable at where, on where you're at, that means you're not getting better at whatever it is that you want to do. Yeah. You always have to put yourself in an uncomfortable situation. There's a there's another quote that's, um, you know, if if your dream does not scare the living dickens out of you, yes. then you're not dreaming big enough. <laughs> you know. I like that. Censored for click clack. <laughs> and it's not like it's not even that you're scared. It's your the way you feel inside is like it's excitement. It's not. Yeah. My friend Rock told me this is like is it is it fear. Because fear is another made-up word. Or is it truly excitement? Being excited and being and the, the feeling of being scared is actually the same thing. Because mm-hmm. what happens to someone if they're getting ready to do like a, a excuse me, uh, a speech or something like that? Like right. cold sweats, hands get sweaty, feet are like shaking, your, your body's like going through this whole thing, you know? But that is pure excitement. That means you're on the way to doing something big. I have a and story to relate it. to this. It's and not Kendama. <laughs> But perfect. Then you, it's a perfect yeah, example. So I was driving home from work a while back and um, I drive back on this like rural country road, like absolutely beautiful. And there was this lady um, walking her bike. It's like an older woman. I don't know, maybe 65, like, yeah, probably about 65 years old, had her thumb out. And I'm like, oh, we'll pick her up. Obviously, like she's got a bike. She's probably got a flat or something. So I pulled over, got her bike in the car and we introduced ourselves. And um, she's like, I just got back from bike touring all through Europe and I never got one flat and I get back home and I get like three flats in a week Like what the hell, you know, mm-hmm. and we're just talking about I was like, oh cool Like I just did my first bike tour last summer Like what did you think and like like she was telling me all about her experiences biking all through Europe alone And I was just kind of like I mean as like a woman like was it scared for you to be by yourself like in a foreign country Like, you know, like alone. And she's just like Like fear doesn't exist, dude like she's like what would you do if you had no fear like everyone told me I was brave but like it's not being brave it's just like doing something that like makes you pumped 
And we just, like, had this awesome conversation, and I dropped her off. And probably will never see her again. But after that, it was just, like, yeah. Like, fear is kind of an illusion. It's, it is an illusion. It sucks and you my in, friend, but, like, my mentor, Anton, told me, he's, like, he, he calls it his, like, Antonism or whatever. Mm-hmm. But fear is really just feeling everything around reality. Yeah. It's not, it's not being scared. It's mm-hmm. just knowing whether or not, like, you see a scary alleyway. Yeah, it might look scary, but is it really scary? It's a story that we make yeah. up it's in a, our head about up. the dark alleyway. Yeah. It's the <laughs> story we tell ourselves yeah. about the monster under our bed. Another good friend, Jake Ducey, like, always told a story about, you know, fear is what we make up. And, like, you know, if you actually looked under the bed and look, there's no monster under there. Like, <laughs> we're creating that fear, yeah. that, that fear, but we're physically feeling that, like, excitement, as you're saying. Energetically, we feel angsty. Our body feels weird. We're... You know, shaking in our bed because we think the boogie monster is gonna rip us out of you know the yeah. sheets. Mm-hmm. But we're we're telling us a story about the the alleyway. That yeah. fear is illusion. Yeah, it's illusion. illusion. You just gotta like meet people that remind you that like, dude, you're fine. <laughs> and I actually <laughs> no. I had a I had a dream send about this send recently. It. Send it. I had a dream that the message at the end of this dream was, um, it was a giant giant bear like a bear that was like 20 size the size of a normal bear that came around this giant tree and there was this little baby lion like playing and the message was the bear speaking to the lion it said our duty every day is to remind each other why we're here and that's what i think community is like really about like when we have those doses of like fear of like frustration anger that's real within us we're not landing a trick and we're throwing our damas <laughs> and it's like that one brother or sister that's like it's okay it's all right you know like try again let it go as much as you can like focus on what you can you can do to keep going like everything's gonna be all right totally. mm-hmm. it's like we're here to, to help each other out it's another beautiful part Good about on. this whole process and why i think we're sitting at this table yeah so. jack's outside we should let him in I jack baker let, i want to let you finish yeah Yo. Nice, dude. The cameras died, I think, but I think we're still good. We're still recording, though. I cool. Yesterday, I posted a thing on Click Clack Radio Instagram saying that you're going to be here and if people had any questions for you. So we got a couple we want to okay. get through. All right. Um, okay. Somebody asked, uh, what inspired the flow dynamic duo edits with you and Kenyatta and how much time and effort goes into making those? Uh, majority of all of our edits that we make all take a weekend. So we'll just, we'll come, we'll come through, like, whether it was San Diego or Las Vegas, we'll just get together, film whatever. If we're feeling good, we go to that spot and we do what feels good at that moment. Like, oh, dude, we should go for this. Everything is organic when we make these edits. And the thing that inspired me to tell Kenyatta, like, we should do this is the fact of sharing. And... We see people playing kendama by themselves a lot, but we never see two people using one kendama. True. A lot. We don't see it a lot. It happens, but we wanted to portray that. We wanted, and with our, both of our styles, they complement each other so well. And I feel like we are going in an avenue that nobody wants to touch. I mean, we want people to touch it. Like, people are actually doing it now. Uh, Panic and John John from New York they're actually doing what Mm. we do now yeah which is so dope for me like I'm so happy that that is happening because it just shows that like this is a thing like this is truly a thing um but the fact of two people playing with one kendama what is that showing collaboration trust teamwork teamwork so many things I mean two people playing that's what mattered to me it was like not just one person. If you do it with two people, it's gonna spread. Like yeah. regardless, because that person is gonna go play with another person. And they're gonna be like, "Oh, dude, let's do it." What is ha- what's gonna happen after this podcast? Josh wants to do a doubles trick with me. He wants to do a flow trick with me. And what ha- What did that spawn from? You were just talking to me about this outside of here, and you said, "Dude, I want to do a trick." I've been watching or I watched your guys' flow dynamic edits like I want to do this with you and you were purely just genuinely inspired to do that and that actually really makes me happy because it it's happening you know like it's happening maybe it didn't happen right away but it's happening now and that makes me happy I mean I can relate with that like the fact that (laughs) for the first click clock radio 
you were the first guest that we had because you're like I'm gonna drive down to Corvallis you fr- like you free this week like let's do it and I'm like now you're here like co-hosting boom yeah I love it absolutely I love it you know you gotta you feel that in- intuition like you see a person on the side of the road with a bike and you want to pick them up you just it's that moment that the universe offers us of like genuine curiosity and it's whether or not we shut that down and go the other way it's that 50 50 choice you say it's like that, that direction yeah. it's either like yes what's the best that can happen i'm gonna make myself feel uncomfortable because i have no idea what's gonna happen or you're gonna or i'm yourself. just gonna feel comfortable and not do yeah. so all right this question can go to both of you guys um what is the dharma that's at the top of your want list mm. oh Yo, dude Dom right King. like right now this moment yeah what do you want You can go first if you want. Just a Dama that's always been like sought after for me. It's just White Mug. Ooh. I'm not about to drop just the so cash classic. on that. Yeah. But do you but care yeah, if it's it brand new or do you care if it's like beat or anything? Like, can it be beat or do you want it brand new? I prefer brand new Damas because I like putting my own blood, sweat, break and tears in. Yeah. I like mm. to see how they mm. break in when I play them. But either way, you know, that's just a Dama that's always been kind of on the pedestal. Yeah. But I'm not actively searching for it. It'll come to me when it does. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. My current, like, want list is A Netter's oh, new yeah. pro mod. Mm. I really, I love it. I absolutely love what it stands for. Yeah. Like, find your wings, you know, like, his whole theme behind it. It looks super ill. I, that, that's what I want right now. And right. also Christian's been I in the game that. for so yeah. long. Christian's been like, in it. You know, yeah. want to support him. Exactly. You know, yeah. He's yeah. grown so much as a person, really? too. It's yeah. it's yeah. really phenomenal to see where he's at in the amount of time that he's yeah. put in, you know? Yeah. It's awesome. It's yeah. it's it's time for that guy, for sure. For sure. Yeah, Absolutely. that was really exciting when he got announced. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was pumped for him. Um, Can I ask one? See. Of course. Uh, a couple of them we actually already even covered. Like, how do you think Kendama will evolve? Yeah, kinda I think we kind of did that already. I got one that my my good friend asked. Um, do you think you'll ever go for more than eleven J sticks? <laughs> I'm currently trying to break it right now, without telling anyone. I'm, I've actually went out on three different missions to go for it, <sighs> and I've hit a bunch of nines, hit a few tens, hit an eleven. Can you even track it at that point? I can actually show you a video right now of getting twelve, not landing like it, rotations. but seeing the rotation. Yeah, I was yeah. a quarter. I'm a quarter short from making twelve. Oh my God. So it Were you will naked? Happen. You'll get it. No, I was fully clothed. <laughs> I was fully clothed. That's was legendary. <laughs> that it ever. Was I naked? Man, okay. To go in my defense, okay. it, was so hot. Hot. it was hot. It was hot. It was so hot. I was there. It was hot. It was super, it was super hot. I'm wearing corduroy white '70s pants, like no flex. I needed to take those pants off, like. <laughs> Jake, he was there. He knew it. I needed to take those pants off. I didn't want to get naked, but I had to in order to make it happen. Like, you saw how many times I was pulling up my pants. Like, oh, yeah. there was no possible way I was going to get it. It was either that or I ripped my pants. Like, I wasn't going to rip my pants because I really like those Fair enough. pants. Like, I think it made that that much better. You adapt. <laughs> yeah, you got to adapt. But, yes, I am going yeah. for... I am currently going for 12J. Well, that's exciting. I have an edit that. four that I've, I've been scheming on. I have <laughs> another thing that I want to do with Colin that I've been trying to plan out for, like, I mean, I kind of shared with you guys. I yeah. don't want to share here because yeah. it's okay. just, like, really important. Exclusive. Stay yeah. tuned. We can do a, another episode for <laughs> what it actually happened. I'm very, very <laughs> excited for. Cool. So, yes, I am going for it. Awesome. <laughs> I'm looking nice. forward you to that. You got this. What about, I think Ben had a really good question. Where is he at? Ben? You've been in the kendama scene uh, since near the beginning. What do you think about the current state of kendama? For example, culture, exposure, companies, players, media, tricks, etc. Hands down, it's growing fast, and it's growing fast. People may think that it's dying, but it's not dying. It's actually people within the community that actually care are still growing it. Mm Mm-hmm. And we're getting more people that truly care about it, growing it. Yes, there's going to be pockets. No matter what, there's going to be pockets. But it's gonna, it's continuously growing every single day. There are going to be companies that drop off, but those are like the companies that like want to get in it for like a quick dollar, right. which is fine. Any company can come in, and any any other company will come in and can come in. We should allow that actually, because regardless, in the end. It's awareness of what Kendama is. 
And if somebody else were to get into Kendama within these B-grade companies that we may not like because they're making money, it doesn't matter. The reason being is because they are spreading awareness too and they don't even know it. If they were to sell a Kendama to somebody and then that person really digs deep into that, who are they gonna find? They are gonna find those people that are truly passionate about Kendama. Yeah. And what's that gonna do? It's gonna inspire them to be part of that. And then in turn, we have another generation of people that are just gonna be part of it, that want to be part of it, truly be part of it yeah. and grow it. So it really doesn't matter. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> it's very true. It's really on how we look at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something that's been really big for me, and maybe this can be an extension of this question is- I hope you, I answered the question. No, you totally did. You totally, okay. yeah, that was great. Um, just in terms of how how do we want a family or a business or a principal or an educator to have first experience Kendama? Do we want them to see us as a bunch of hooligans? Or do we want them to see us as a bunch of inspiring young humans that are transforming our minds, that are empowering sure. oh, yeah. humans? Oh, yeah. You know, and so that's not a fear, because fear, as we spoke of, is an illusion, but something that I've been aware of as like a tendency of how we carry ourselves and something I love you say is like love that you say is you know how do you carry kendama how do you carry yourself and that's the intention each breath each step that you're walking into the day every time you wear that kendama around your neck you're representing kendama every time that you walk into a store and someone asks you about kendama and you either offer kindly to share or you maybe are having a bad day and you make a a sarcastic comment they're gonna see that maybe as their first kendama experience mm -hmm. right. and so that's something that I just want to continue to put out there is you know how you carry yourself with a kendama could influence how a principal sees kendama in her school right you know you don't want a negative mm -hmm. connotation associated with it yeah because there are humans out there that have the perception of skateboarders or skiers or snowboarders being hooligans or like mm -hmm vandals and <laughs> that's because of different things that may have occurred in their own experience and so mm -hmm. there's always like the person that ruins it for the rest though you know mm -hmm. but no, that's a good point it's a, something to definitely think about it's an all it's yeah. a, everything is an opportunity yeah. to grow and to you know become more aware yeah so yeah i think you hit that question on the on the nail i just wanted to yeah. fill that one in what else we got in here um it's a break dancing question why Velcro strap shoes? Oh, <laughs> okay. We haven't had it yet. Let's so check this we out. We haven't had the public service the announcement. Vel the public yeah. service announcement. If it ain't Puma, <laughs> I ain't wearing it. Hashtag, I made it. I made that one. I love. I absolutely love Pumas. I will wear Puma clothing, whatever, whatever. Um, when I had moved to Atlanta, I remembered getting rid of all of my old shoes and finally like getting a pair of Pumas again. Like Puma suede's are always my favorite shoes. I actually stole my first pair from my older sister when I was in middle school that she like I remember like cleaning them and I was like and like straight up took them from my sister and she knew that I was wearing them because I, I really liked them but anyway when you find something that you really like why change if you find something that you love why change it and you know that you 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 it works for you yeah. why change it I mean always be open to newer things but I know that this works for me and I've always wanted a pair of velcro pumas and I could never find them <laughs> And one day I came into, I went into Puma and I found them. They had them in black and white, like black with white sole and then white with black sole. And I was like, both. Immediately, I bought both of them immediately because I wanted Velcros so much. I, I think that they remind us to be kids. Mm. Kids are like the most purest thing ever. Like all they think about is being happy and playing. They remind me to be a kid. They remind me that we have pure happiness inside of us still we just have to express that yeah but that's why i wanted these velcros because i've always wanted them and it reminds me of being a kid mm. and kid shoes are the sickest like they have the <laughs> illest looking velcro shoes ever on the market you have like elmos you have like big bird ones you like excuse me i just straight up drooled right there <laughs> but they have the best looking shoes right yeah. Then they're so cute. Up. You can wear yeah. that, dude. Come on. <laughs> I absolutely love kids' shoes. Oh. All right. But that's um, why I have Velcros. <laughs> that's, awesome. that's a great one. All right. Do okay, we... one more. Yeah, go for it. Before I ask my last question, I don't go know what you want to wrap go up with. But, 
Um, how long did you grow your hair out when you had full head of dreadlocks? And then when you cut them, why did you choose to, to hold one on? Okay. Uh, I had my locks. Whew. I had my locks for nine and a half years when I had them. I told myself that I was going to keep my locks until they made it past my knees. In 2012, I ended up cutting them when they were an inch away from my knees. About an inch. Not even that much. I could have gone and done it, but I felt it was the right time for change. My mom had been asking me, you know, cut your hair for the longest time. And I just remember saying, are you going to pay me to cut my hair? Because I'm not going to cut my hair. Like, I absolutely love my hair. I did this for a reason, you know, and I have a goal that I want to make. But one night, like, I was flying home for Thanksgiving, and I was like, you know what? I need this change. Like, there's something telling me, like, dude, you need to get rid of the weight that you've been carrying around. It's time for, it's time for you. Something was telling me that. Like, I remember mm -hmm. looking in the mirror before I got on my flight, and I was like, it's time. It's time, you know? Ended up flying to Sacramento from Atlanta for Thanksgiving, and I told my mom, I was like, mom, grab the clippers. I'm ready. She sat down. I had freaking uh, Aldrin come over and record it. Like, yeah, you made an edit out yeah, of it. Yeah, I made an edit out <laughs> of it. Like, yeah. it was the right time. Mm. And the reason why I kept this one, not, it's one now, but this is actually six or seven Whoa. put into Dang. one lock. Mm. So from here on up is actually one lock, but this is like seven, I believe. It looks Six braided. or seven, right? Yeah. So I told myself, like, I didn't make it past my knees, but I'm still going to complete it with these. Hmm. And when this makes it down to past my knees, I'll decide whether or not I want to cut it. But the reason why I'm growing my hair out again is because I remember specifically reading something online where there was somebody telling uh it was like on a really big like on reddit or something like that but this person ended up saying you can't get anywhere in life if you grow your hair out as like like dreadlocks or like growing it long as a man or something like that like you must cut your hair and clean up and be part of what society tells Such you to bullshit. be <laughs> and that was wrong that was wrong for me to hear mm -hmm. and i was like you know what dude gonna prove that person wrong yeah. again like I remember I remember it like having like having my locks before and I felt like I was carrying them around for a reason and really like now I'm growing my hair out again and I'm gonna show like you can do whatever it is that you want in life if you truly want it with long hair or not yeah, with yeah, dreadlocks or factor. not it's not it doesn't matter what it is you want you can do it's right in front of you. The universe wants you to live in abundance, but you have to want what the universe wants to give you. And you have to go and get it and do it. And I'm gonna do that again. Yeah. Like, this is gonna be my hair tie. <laughs> this bit. long one is gonna be my hair tie. I actually have, I have <laughs> one little scarf, dread. Yeah. <laughs> and my, wow, that's inspiring. I have <laughs> one baby dread back here. Yeah. I have the one dread, dude. The Jedi. And it's the total hair tie. <laughs> one dread, one love. Shout out one dread, one love on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Just ties your oh. hair up. It's all you need. You don't need any more plastic rubber bands. You know, it works out. That's great. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing. That's a really like yeah. you know profound story. I'm glad you delved into that. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. This thank has you been for like having me. One of the coolest thank episodes. You. I mean, yeah. Shout out to Jack Baker here. He helps produce Click Clack Radio. Thank you, Jack. Jack. Thank you, Jack, for having, Jack, having us. Applause. We have Appreciate one final you. question though. Do we? Yes. What is it? This is my favorite question for both of you. How can Kendama change the world? Rapid fire, go. Deep. Um, I think I, I'd like to add on to what I said earlier, failure. Like, I think it's so important. I think failure is just awesome. I don't know. I think it makes you grow as a person. I think it pushes you outside your comfort zone, and I think, I think that could absolutely change the way people see the world and the way you know hmm. change the world in a small pocket but that you know that grows and that, absolutely you know, that i feel like failure is part of it yeah but i will go back on what i said as well whatever energy you're putting into your hardest trick you tell this to anyone it could someone's hardest trick could be a big cup in whatever energy you are putting into your hardest trick if you were to apply that to any situation in life 
positively, of course, because there are people out there that have ill will. If you put that energy of determination, of motivation, of wanting and doing into anything it is in life, you're golden. And it's right in front of you for the taking. And the universe wants to give it to you. But it's up to you to make that choice to get there. I agree. And that, yeah, like, along with the failure thing, it's like, you can fail and just decide to just live with that. And just and bail. Yeah. Or you can actually, like, fight back. To, like, mm-hmm. no, I won't. And everyone is going to have a different way of portraying Absolutely. it. Absolutely. But that's how I believe Kendama can truly change the world. Yeah. So find your It can flow. eventually become a peace toy. For it sure. Is it is a peace toy. We have to look we already have to look at it as a peace it toy. It is a peace toy. Find your flow, spike hard, catch low. <laughs> thank you, Dave Mateo. Yeah. <laughs> Turn. No, thank you for sharing that message. I hope that, that you know, really inspires some people listening to this podcast and I think it will. Thank you so, for having thank you, thank Dave, you for having Turner. Me. Thank, and you. thank you, Josh, for co hosting in you. Molly's place. It's, today. it's been an um, honor be, to be here, seriously. Yeah. Like yeah. thank really you so much. It. And thank you, Konami USA, for helping get Dave out here. Absolutely. Thank you, yeah, Konami absolutely. USA. Yeah. Thank you, Konami USA, for sponsoring this podcast. You can go to Konami USA, and you can use the code ClickClack for 10% off your order. Absolutely. So, yeah. Grab yourself a Turner Thorn mod. Oh. Oh. Pick it up. Yes. <laughs> How are you carrying yourself? Bring it into the world. That's a wrap, I think. Yeah. We can go write a wrap after this. <laughs> Word. Yeah, Sweet. Thank you. Radio. Hey.